Here we're gonna look at an interesting little number puzzle. So our goal is to answer the question, when does n factorial end with 1,000 zeros? And there's a little bit of a trick to this, and this trick has a name to it. It's called Polignac's formula. So let's see what that says. It says the exponent of a prime p in the factorization of n factorial is the floor of n over p plus the floor of n over p squared plus the floor of n over p cubed, and that looks like an infinite sum. And why I say it looks like an infinite sum is depending on the size of n, this will eventually truncate. So notice at some point, a power of p will be larger than n, and thus n over that power of p will be less than one, and so the floor will be equal to zero. Okay, so we'll use this formula along with a couple of straightforward inequalities. So let's jump into our solution. So first off, I wanna notice we have the following inequality involving the floor function. So for all x, which is a real number, we have the floor of x is less than or equal to x, so that's pretty clear given the definition of the floor. It is the greatest integer that is less than x. Okay, so we've bound the floor above. Now let's bound it below. And it's bounded below by x minus 1. So let's think our way through that. We'll notice that if x is not an integer, then it takes you down to the previous integer. But x could be like very, very close to the next integer, which is how you get this x minus one kind of as that lower bound. Okay, nice. Now what we'll do is use this inequality in order to turn this problem, which has something to do with floor functions, into something that doesn't really have to do with floor functions. So first off, we really want to count the number of times 10 divides n factorial. But the problem with that is that 10 is not a prime. So we can think about the prime factorization of 10, which is obviously two times five. And since five is larger than two, what we really wanna aim for is the number of times that five divides into n factorial. In other words, we want to solve setting this e expression equal to 1,000 for p equal 5. So let's maybe summarize that right down here. So we want the floor of n over 5 plus the floor of n over 5 squared all the way up. So that's going to be an infinite looking sum that eventually truncates equal to 1,000. So now let's just set this equal to capital A, just so that we have some easy notation. We don't have to keep rewriting this sum of these floor objects. Okay, so now let's apply this top part of the inequality to each of these terms to bound A below, to bound A above by some object that is a little bit easier to deal with. So notice here, we're gonna have A is less than or equal to n over five plus n over five squared plus n over five cubed, and that is an infinite sum. Okay, nice. But now we can see that that's an infinite geometric series where the starting term, which is sometimes called little a, is n over five, and the common ratio, which is sometimes denoted by r, is one over five. And we've got a nice formula for the sum of a geometric series, and that is n over five over one minus one over five. In other words, a over one minus r. Then it's pretty easy to calculate from there that we need n over four. So let's see what we've got. We've got our a, which is our goal expression, is less than n over four, but we want it to be equal to 1,000. So that means that 1,000 is less than n over 4, which tells us that n has to be bigger than 4,000. So let's maybe write that down here. n must be bigger than 4,000 like that.
So now we'll apply the other side of the inequality, this x minus one, and we'll use some information about our top part of the inequality in order to turn it into a finite sum. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to live above the following object. So we'll have n over five minus one plus n over five squared minus one. And that's gonna end at n over five to the fifth minus one. You might say, well, why does it end at n over five to the fifth minus one? Well, that's because five to the fifth is equal to 3,125, which sets us up for the top part of this sum because that's the lowest power of five that is less than 4,000. Okay, but now notice that we've got a finite geometric series and then a little bit of another part to it as well. So let's write that down. This is gonna be n over five plus n over five squared all the way up to n over five to the fifth minus one plus one plus one. Well, that's five times, so it's gonna be minus five. But likewise, as we did over here, this sum of an infinite geometric series, we can do the same kind of thing right here for the sum of a finite geometric series. And what we'll see is that this is equal to n over five times one over one over five to the fifth over one minus one over five, and then minus five at the end like that. So like I said, that's because this is a finite geometric series. So notice we want this object A to be equal to 1000. So in fact, we want to find N so that this object over here is less than 1000. And then this object over here is bigger than 1000. So let's maybe bring that information to the top and we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we used an inequality to figure out if our goal object was equal to 1000, which made the number of zeros at the end of n factorial equal to 1000. We needed 1000 to be bigger than 781 times n my, over 3125 minus five. So that's a simplification of the left-hand side of the inequality from the last board. And it had to be less than n over four. So let's see if we can use this to get a stricter bound for n. So like we did on the last board, we can see that this portion of the inequality implies that n needs to be bigger than 4,000. So that's nice. So now let's go ahead and take this portion of the inequality and see what that gives us. So that tells us first off that 781n over 3125 must be less than 1005. But now we can multiply by 3125 and divide by 781. And we'll get that n must be less than 1005 times 3125 over 781. But this number is in fact less than 4022. So that gives us an upper bound for n. So now putting this inequality and this inequality together, we see that n is on the set from 4001 all the way up to 4021. So it has to be bigger than 4000. So that means it at least can be 4,001, and it has to be less than 4,022, so the biggest it can be is 4,021. So in fact, it cannot be all of those values, and we don't have to check all of them in order to see that. We only have to check a couple of careful cases. So let's maybe go ahead and notice that if n is equal to 4,000, it does not work because 4,000 is outside of this set. But 4,001, 2, 3, and 4 will all give us the same value for this object, given that we're dividing by powers of 5 and then taking the floor. So that means we can immediately rule out 4,001, 4,002, 4,003, and 4,004. And like I said, that's because 
N has to be strictly bigger than 4,000. And each of these come after 4,000, but before the next multiple of five. Okay, so now we'll just check 4,005. And we'll see what we get. So if we plug 4,005 into this, we'll see that we have 4,005 over five in the floor, plus 4,005 over five squared in the floor, all the way up to 4,005 over five to the fifth in the floor. And that's because five to the sixth is gonna be bigger than 4,005, again, by some stuff that we previously checked. So I'll let you guys check this calculation in detail, but what you'll see is that this works. So we get 1,000 out of that. But now since 4,005 works, that means we get the next four numbers for free. We get all of the next four numbers work because we have not yet hit another multiple of five. So, so in other words, 4,006, 4,007, 4,008, and 4,009 also work. But then 4,010 will not work because that gives us one larger number from this portion of the sum than 4,005 did, but that means we'll get something larger in the total outcome than 1,000. So in the end, we have these five solutions, 4,005 all the way up to 4,009. And that's a good place to stop.